So lift to open up a can of whoop ass on search pricing. I mean, what is the CEO David Risher smoking? Firstly, David, your stock price is under $10. Under $10. Q2, you did not perform. Why are you still running this company? I mean, I, rather, I should rather say he is running this company into the ground. He needs a good whoop ass. This guy needs to get out. I mean, he is terrible for drive. He's terrible for riders. So here he thinks, he thinks this idea is going to fly, ladies and gentlemen. And, and excuse the primitive way I'm making this video. Um, I just have my laptop with me and I had to quickly get this out. Ride hail giant lift will pilot a new feature called price lock. Ladies and gentlemen, price lock, get ready. That will let a rider purchase a monthly subscription that caps the price for a specific route at a specific time, according to David Risha. Right? He, he thinks that riders are going to pay for this. Well, this straight up just hurts the driver. Straight up. It's another slap in the fa face, David Risha, for the driver. The feature is designed to address the inconsistencies of search pricing, particularly for commuters who have who use the Lyft app every day. It's part of Lyft's broader plan to open up a can of whoop ass on prime time, Risha said. Well, you're not doing anything. Again, your stock's under $10, it's $9 something. So the only whoop ass uh, that is deserved here is a good whoop ass whooping on David Risha's ass. Prime time is how Lyft refers to surge pricing, which is when ride hail platforms dynamically increase the price of rides when demand is high or supply is low. Excuse me, that's my kids screaming in the background. Reliable pricing is particularly important to them because they know what their ride should cost and hate it when prices change. So this is all geared to satisfy the rider. The rider is not going to try this BS out. Um, if they do, there's only one loser, the driver. Lyft didn't provide many insights. Yeah, of course, we didn't provide many insights into how the economics of price lock will affect Lyft's bottom line. But Risha said Wednesday that the subscription would cost under $5 monthly. Lyft is testing the feature across the United States now and will roll out final pricing next month, according to a spokesperson. My app is showing $2.99 per month today. That's what they want to charge for that. A spokesman for the company told TechCrunch that the price lock subscription is separate from the Lyft Pink membership. So they're just confusing riders, right? They're trying to sell them all these different type of memberships. The more confusing you make it, the less success you have. Simple. Riders want one membership, and in that membership, you better clearly lay out what you are offering them. No, but we're going to offer you different type of whoop ass memberships, says David Risha. Coming for prime time pricing isn't new to the company. A year ago, Risha outlined his plan to kill surge pricing in an attempt to offer riders cheaper fares to convert them from Lyft's biggest competitor, Uber. Risha noted that prime time won't ever completely go away because it's an important way to match supply when demand spikes quickly. Just let it play out. Let the market play out, right? Why interfere in that process, right? If a driver has the opportunity to make more money on surge, let him or her do so. Don't try to artificially squash surge here with this new crappy whoop ass membership. But with innovations like price lock, it's, it's, not, it's not innovative, David Risha. It's just stupidity. He thinks it's innovation. We can chip away at how often it occurs and hopefully take what I'm willing to bet is Rideshare's most hated feature and turn it into a reason to choose Lyft. Um, so the way I see it, you're just basically interfering in supply and demand, trying to artificially create this price lock. And, you know, there's only one loser here. The driver doesn't uh, get to enjoy a surge. Over the past year, Lyft has made a concerted effort to reduce the number of rides impacted by surge pricing. 
Uh, Risha noted that on a quarterly basis, that number declined by 25%, which he said contributes to better conversion rates. In fact, the markets were where we saw sharpest declines in prime time in Q2, Q2 like Phoenix, Baltimore, Orlando, are the markets where conversion rates are improving the most, said Risha. This was the first quarter that Lyft reported GAP profitability, but that success was tempered somewhat by a soft forecast for the third quarter. Lyft forecast gross bookings, which is the total value of transactions coming in between $4, 4 and $4.1 billion, which is slightly lower than analysts' estimate of $4.13 billion. Well, just look at the stock today, ladies and gentlemen, under $10. This guy has single-handedly screwed up the stock price by introducing dumb, just stupid, unproven membership programs, which he calls whoop-ass programs like price lock. Uber's gross bookings for the second quarter came in at 20.6 billion, but Uber has global market share and Lyft is available only in the United States and Canada. Adjusted core earnings guidance of 90 million to 95 million dollars also came in below Wall Street targets of 104.3 million, Lyft noted that it expects gross bookings to grow slightly faster than rides, in part because decreased surge pricing will have an impact on gross bookings per ride. So dream on, Mr. Risha, dream on. Um, this article is good, uh, it, uh, worthwhile reading. I'm going to leave the link below, but it just goes to show they don't have a plan. This guy does not have a plan, and the things that he promised on Sergio's show, the things he promised me in the Zoom call, you haven't delivered on anything, nothing. You've been the most, well, next to Mr. Kosher Shawi, um, the second most incompetent CEO out there in the gig world. So uh, it's time to replace him. Uh, this guy's a joke. He needs a whoop-ass whooping. Your comments, please.